Bank South Pacific launches latest offering in finance. National Judicial Service launches Legal Year 2015. And remembering the MV Rabal Queen disaster three years on. This is National MTV News with Tokana Hasavi. A very good evening to you. This is Monday's News. Good to be back and good to have your company again. Bank South Pacific launched its new subsidiary, BSP Finance, in Port Moresby today. According to BSP Chief Executive Officer Robin Fleming, BSP Finance will offer a new and better alternative for asset financing. The new subsidiary comes just days after news of BSP's acquisition of Westpac businesses in five Pacific Island countries. This morning, Bank South Pacific officially announced the existence of its newest subsidiary, BSP Finance. Speaking at the media launch, BSP CEO Robin Fleming said the bank is confident that BSP Finance will offer a better alternative to the PNG market with an expanded product range, which includes term deposits, finance lease and commercial loans. Asset finance is one that we've never really been able to, to capture as good a market as we feel um, we should be able to with our broad reach, our broad geographic representation and, and the skills of the staff that we've got. Hence the board determined that we need to establish a finance company. Country manager of BSP Finance, Jody Herbert, said BSP Finance has an effective and quick application process ideal for its targeted business clients. Even down to the simple things, our application process, two pages. We don't have to rewrite you know, your, your life and testament to get things underway. We have very flexible policies, as, as Robin has mentioned. You know, spend a lot of time working through that process to make sure everything is just right to, to fit the market. Uh, very fast approvals. Uh, we don't have a whole series of people that we have to go through to make a decision. In a lot of cases, most of the deals that we will do, but can, the decision can be made by one person. And that's, you know, that, that's a big change to what the market uh, is currently dealing with. Um, we're very fast to settle. If we get everything that we need on the day that we approve the deal, we can settle the same day. BSP Finance will also provide an additional distribution channel supporting its existing customer base and grow market share in Fiji and Papua New Guinea. Obviously and clearly PNG always remains the market that we need to be able to provide the real solution for. PNG, no matter what we do in the Pacific, is the market that drives our profitability. PNG is always going to be the benchmark of any other business that we do across the Pacific. With the acquisition of the Westpac businesses in Vanuatu, Tonga, Samoa, Cook Islands and Solomon Islands, BSP now has the opportunity to take this product to other Pacific Island countries. Delhi Bagu, National MTV News. Father Victor Rauch from the Catholic Bishops Conference of Papua New Guinea and, and the Solomon Islands says the conference condemns all forms of police brutality. His comments come following the increasing number of alleged police killings and assault cases reported on the media. In a conference today, CBC's General Secretary Father Victor said the numerous cases of police harassment on the public is a result of poor governance, endemic corruption within the police department and the inadequate training of police personnel. He said such cases are commonly faced by all police officers in PNG and they have a direct impact on the type of work these officers carry while policing the communities. The last few weeks we have seen uh, in the media uh, the stories of police brutality, uh, police indiscipline. Last month the police force came under public criticism on a number of killings that occurred in Ley, NCD and WIWAC. Following these killings, numerous public concerns were raised on both social media and the mainstream on the level of discipline and the use of firearms in the police force. Father Victor said CBC is now suggesting that the constabulary hold proper investigations of the recent killings and abuse of police authority. It should increase the period of training for new recruits and for the government to review the wages and housing conditions for the entire police force. Sometimes the police force initially they have only some six months training 
and some reserve police they have only three months. This is not enough for proper disciplined force as the police should be. So it is good to have a proper and a longer training for the police. Takla Gunga, National MTV News. Today, the National and Supreme Courts of PNG officially opened the 2015 legal year at the Waigani Court premises. Chief Justice Sir Salomo India officiated the ceremony and told the disciplinary forces to implement decisions made by the courts without question or pause. After the opening ceremony, Sir India officiated the groundbreaking ceremony of the construction phase of the new National and Supreme Courts complex. The ceremony began with a march from Godwit Street, just outside the Australian High Commission, up Independence Drive, into the Waigani National and Supreme Court premises. After the march, Se Injia inspected the parade. At the ceremony, Chief Justice Se Salamo Injia emphasized that the liberty, dignity and the rights of individual citizens must be respected and protected. To take those decisions, consider them and exercise your mind and discretion and your discretion to implementing those decisions with care and respect so that the rights and dignity of the individual citizens of this country are not trampled by those, the implementation of those decisions. Se India addressed the three disciplinary forces and the legal officers to perform their duties with care and leadership. He reminded everyone that the country is governed by the rule of law and so all must provide leadership and maintain that the rule of law prevails. To remember that this country is ruled by the rule of law and it is our duty to uphold the rule of law in supporting the courts to dispense with justice under any circumstances, even if those circumstances are trying and difficult. Chief Justice Se India stated that there are challenges that the court face every year. Many of them are generated by the government on the type of decisions passed in the parliament. But, uh, there are some issues, serious issues that the government is addressing, as a result of which uh, it generates disputes that the courts are being asked to resolve. And uh, we, we are building our capacity to improve our capacity to deal with those kind of disputes. Meanwhile, the event ended with the groundbreaking ceremony of a construction phase of the 600 million kina project that will house the national and supreme courts. It is hopeful to be completed by 2017, just in time for the 2018 APEC meeting. Vasinata Yama, National MTV News. The PNG Judiciary Branch has identified a former judge from Australia to take up a role as a judge in PNG. His appointment and identity will be announced shortly. Chief Justice Sir Salomo India says the appointment of this new judge is crucial and will limit the current vacancies to only three. The Chief Justice says the judiciary has vacancies for four more appointments to be made this year. However, he says a retired senior judge from Australia is being selected to take up role as a judge in PNG and his appointment will be announced soon. We have vacancy for four new judicial appointments to be made this year. One has already been made. <coughs> I will make an announcement of that shortly. He's a very senior judge a former retired judge from Australia that has been appointed. He's a former Chief Justice of one of the Australian states, has been recently appointed. This appointment will limit the number of vacancies to only three. Se Salamo says the new judge will be posted to Kokopo in East New Britain province. The Chief Justice made this announcement in an interview with MTV Today at the opening of the 2015 legal year in Port Mosby. He says the judiciary expansion program since 2008 has opened new branches for both higher and lower courts in provinces. He says this year no new branches will be opened, but we look forward to establish a branch in Northern Province next year. This year there will not be any new uh, provincial location opened up, but uh, next year we are opening one in, uh, in Oro and possibly in Vanimo, in Western Province. We look at uh, Western Province and Manus 
in 2017. He says the judiciary is expanding to provide services to people at provincial levels. Quintana Lomp, National MTV News. On a related topic, Chief Justice Sir Salomo Injia says court cases relating to violence against women and children are given serious consideration when they end up in the courts. In light of the recent human rights report indicating that PNG is not a safe country for women, Sir Salomo says the courts treat family violence cases seriously but fairly according to legislation. The recently released Human Rights World Report 2015 has described PNG as a dangerous place in the world for women to live in. The report highlighted abuses that arose around wife basing, gender inequality, discrimination, corruption and excessive use of force by police. The report also points out human rights issues surrounding asylum seekers processing and violence in detention facilities in Manus province. It elaborates on sorcery deaths and related violence that continue to put PNG down the rank in terms of human rights. The report stated that perpetrators of violence against women and children are rarely prosecuted and access to courts, legal services and police are narrow. But Chief Justice Se Salamo India says the courts addresses human rights issues, violence against women and children seriously when it ends up in courts. The courts have their own programs for addressing uh, violence against women. Not only violence against women, but some of the people on the disability, like children. Uh, we have our own programs. There are some legislations that are in place that the courts uh, uh, implement with the assistance of the police force. Uh, so we, 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 we're addressing uh, those issues as and when required, because there are already uh, some legislations in place. But I cannot comment on whether those legislations are effective in addressing those issues, but when the matters do end up in court, we take them seriously. He says since 2008, the judiciary is expanding out to provinces to make sure people have access to legal services. The Chief Justice says in 2017, the judiciary will open a new branch in Northern Province with preferences for Western and Manus provinces on the list. And we are trying to bring services, judicial services, of both the higher and the lower courts to the people. Quinton Alomp, National MTV News. And ahead in the news, Como Airfield commercialized Pogara Likaban developments and the process of coffee production from tree to, to store shelves. All of that coming after the break. Stay with us. Good to have you back with the news. Minister for Civil Aviation David Stephen and new ExxonMobil Managing Director Andrew Barry today signed an agreement for commercial operations out of the Como Airfield. The agreement will see the opening of the Como Airfield for airline operators and disaster relief operations in Hela Province. The signing was witnessed by Prime Minister Peter O'Neill and other stakeholders. Hela Province will now open its doors to PNG and the world with the development of the current Como airfield. The signing this morning facilitates the opportunity for airline operators in the country to expand business in Hela Province. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill says the airfield is also a strategic location for delivery of relief supplies into the Highlands region and surrounding areas. It gives us an opportunity to uh, allow many of the uh, commercial airlines to now fly into, uh, into uh, Como and uh, as a result of that uh, uh, we will see increased services uh, flowing onto our, our communities there. I will look forward to working with the uh, uh, NAC, Andy Guinea, uh, my Prime Minister, ExxonMobil, to ensure that that important facility remains usable over the years. And what we the current Como airfield was built by ExxonMobil to facilitate the PNG LNG project and the company is excited to see the door open for airlines operators. Uh, it's extremely pleasing that we've been able to come to an agreement where one of these infrastructure projects is going to be able to be used uh, for the benefit of all Papua New Guineans. Once complete, the new airport will have a runway length of 3,200 metres with 45 meters flight strip. National Airports Corporation will monitor the developments to meet international civil aviation and PNG CASA rules and regulations. 
Jack Lapave, Junior National, MTV News. Meanwhile, the Como airfield will not only cater for commercial airline operators, but be used as a training ground for the PNG Defence Force. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill announced that a military training base will also be established at the airport facility. And as a result of that, uh, the airport itself will be used for training facilities to train our Air, air Force pilots. And of course, uh, we have got some joint uh, exercises which we do with the Australian Defence Force. While Papua New Guineans are being encouraged to develop a culture of savings, there are challenges to this that are unique to the country. In a closed workshop today, findings of a study into the country's financial system showed how the high interest rate margin that exists in PNG is impacting the ability of Papua New Guineans to save money in commercial banks. Professor Satish Chan from the University of New South Wales found in his research that Papua New Guineans are not depositing as much as the economy would need. Because when you have very low savings rates and people have to wait at the banks for so long, pay so much fees and charges, you put a hundred kina into your bank account and over time it just disappears. Right? So you don't have any reason to put money into the bank account. The study confirms that there is a very high gap that exists between the interest rate that is paid on deposits and on loans given out by banks. We need to look at the factors responsible for the high margin. And the factors can be, and as I listed on the board, it can be the high cost of doing business. It can be that banks are not competitive enough, so ICCC has to look into it, right? Uh, maybe um, we have too much money floating around. The cost for the high interest rate margin is an issue that is up for debate. While some point to the high cost of doing business in the country. Electricity bills, transportation, in other words, the roads are too bad. There's law and order, security is a problem. It's telling us that shipping costs are very high, air freights are very high. The state-owned enterprises and the way they function is contributing vastly into the operations of business. Others may argue that the huge profits that commercial banks are making in the country are more than enough to offset these costs. So you have the case where the margins are very high, the cost of doing business is also high, but profitability is also very high. So that means that there must be room to reduce the margin between the interest offered on your deposits versus what is charged on your loan. Sarah Aupong, National MTV News. Coffee remains one of the most popular beverages in the world. About 1% of that coffee comes from Papua New Guinea. But not many Papua New Guineans know how PNG's organically grown coffee is processed. MTV's Edwin Fidelis gives a tiny snapshot into how coffee beans are harvested to the moment it ends up in a supermarket. This is what happens behind large corrugated doors of a coffee factory. Coffee beans goes through numerous processes before it ends up in a store. Much of the coffee beans that end up in big factories like this one comes from small-scale coffee growers. First, the manual labor. The cherries are picked and hulled. Many coffee farmers use the cost-efficient manual coffee pulping machine. Coffee beans are then dried out in the open sun to allow its parchments to peel off. Boys law also look out in sand dry. Area stop over camp. Walk all over camp, pick him up or sem. See one hand or sem, put him against him. Leg flow now, but squeeze. Squeeze, rouse him all. Sell now. All blue name, you can look him in. Coffee him, cleaned. For big factories, the work is done by machines dedicated to each section along the processing line. It's a, it's a very big factory. We've just installed all the new machines and uh, it can do uh, six tons an hour. Some coffee farmers sell their processed coffee in bulk to local factories. Others sell no more than 20 kilograms, fetching roughly 32 kina at a price of 1 kina 60 per kilogram. This is a coffee roaster. It plays an important role in the manufacturing process in Papua New Guinea, only a few big factories located in the islands own them. It requires expertise to roast the processed bean to an accepted standard. Coffee itself have, uh, will go through two, three phases. There will be a 
browning stage where the coffee will turn from green to yellow to brown. That's one stage. It's called a sugar caramelization. The roasted beans then go into this iron bowl to cool off in preparation for quality checks. After checks are done, it is grinded, packed and ready for sale. Each coffee producing country develops its own preference of how to prepare coffee. Papua New Guinea's coffee export amounts to about 1% in the world market. Even with perfect climate conditions, farmers and exporters are still faced with uncertainties surrounding unstable coffee price, poor infrastructure investments and middlemen wanting a large cut of profit. Edwin Fidelis, National MTV News, Lay. And now we take a look at the finance news. The Kina closed the same at 0.3815 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina was buying 0.374 US dollars, 0.4775 Australian dollars, 0.3275 Euro and 43.38 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold closed the day higher, while coffee, cocoa and copper closed lower. Palm oil and copper closed lower, while crude oil closed higher. And lastly, on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed at 27 points lower, the ASX closed at 2 points higher, and the All Ordinaries closed at 77 points higher. You're watching National MTV News tonight. Survivors remember the Rabaul Queen three years on. I'll give you that and more, including stories making headlines overseas when we come back. Thanks for your company and welcome back to the news. Today marks the third anniversary of the capsizing and sinking of MV Rabaul Queen in rough seas off the coast of Finchhafen. The ferry was on its way from Kimbe to Leh with over 500 passengers on board. In Leh, a section of the Old Town Cemetery was filled with wreaths and flowers laid by friends and family members in memory of the victims. MTV's Bethany Harriman reports from Leh. Wreaths and flowers were laid at Leigh's Old Cemetery, remembering over 300 men, women and children who lost their lives on board MV Rabaul Queen three years ago. On this monument are the names of the souls on the ship from Bougainville, East New Britain, and Kimbe on the way to Leigh. It's understood that over 500 passengers were on that vessel, way over the ferry's capacity of 310 passengers. Today marks the third anniversary of one of Papua New Guinea's worst maritime disasters. For some who survived that tragic voyage, life isn't the same. Grace Konukung and her family were on MV Rabaul Queen when it capsized and sunk 16 kilometers from Finchhafen. She lost her five-year-old daughter, Carol, who drowned while her mother tried to swim out from the sinking ship. Life for Grace and her family have continued three years on. Tracy, standing next to her mother, survived. She was seven at the time. A commission of inquiry was set up by the national government to investigate why MV Rabaul Queen sunk. Bethany Harriman, National MTV News, Lay. Though the liquor ban in Pagara has been uplifted, police warned they will not tolerate people being drunk and disorderly. The ban was imposed last year during the state of emergency call-out by the Enga provincial government. 
The smuggling of liquor into the Pogera mine town has been a daunting task for the security force and the local police. This came about from a liquor ban imposed in the province last year during the SOE call out by the Anga provincial government. However, the ban was recently uplifted with police warning local businesses to abide by conditions. Owner of Sai Lodge, Jones Power, was trading liquor before the ban but was stopped. The uplifting of the ban comes as a relief to him as his license was given back. His license will be closely monitored to ensure conditions of entry into his licensed premises are not breached. He says he will cooperate with police to closely monitor and ensure that only genuine customers enter his premises. Police have warned that anyone found to cause trouble in public will be arrested and charged for drunken disorderly. Mickey Cavera, National MTV News. Western Governor Ate Wabira was arrested today by the police for allegedly misappropriating 7 million kina. Governor Wabira was taken to the Baraka police station and detained for several hours before he was later released on 20,000 kina bail. His case is now before the fraud investigation team in Port Moresby. Meanwhile, jailed Komo Magarima MP Francis Potape's bail application case today was adjourned to tomorrow. Potape was found guilty on one count of conspiracy to defraud the state and two counts of misappropriation and was sentenced to serve two and a half years in prison. On a brighter note, five ambitious students from a Port Moresby-based orphanage had the perfect start to their academic year after receiving sets of uniforms and stationery. Despite experiencing the harsh realities of being homeless and penniless, they all have one goal in common, the desire to work towards a better life. This is the smile of a Papua New Guinean that aspires to be a doctor one day, while her counterpart with an ardent look of determination aims to be a scientist. Meet Eva Quincy and Anderson Ken, two of five students at Life PNG Care who received school equipment and uniforms to start their academic year. The donor, also IPBC's managing director, Wasanta Kumarasiri, says as much as he wants to cater to all the children at the orphanage, he can only do so much. I think uh, my appeal to other similar colleagues is to look at uh, what is happening. This place has uh, around 40 children who need to go to school. Colin Pake is a name that all these children find synonymous with refuge. It's the name that belongs to this man, a full-time public servant. But to these children, Colin is a full-time Good Samaritan. Pake, with his band of helpers, established Life PNG Care two years ago. And the process of identifying them is we have a quite process which we either liaise with uh, churches in the settlements or communities, and also my own research by involving with the homeless. While individuals like Colin Pake offer hope to a fraction of homeless children on Port Moresby streets, the real issue that needs to be addressed lies within PNG's constitution. Last year, in a parliament session, outspoken NCD Governor Paus Parker explained that orphanages operating in the country cannot get assistance from provincial governments according to laws under the Piccanini Act. The then Community Development Minister, Lojai Koza, replied saying there are no specific policies or legal framework to set up orphan centres in the country. But while this unresolved constitutional loophole lingers, Colin Pakis says he will continue his work. So after doing this for like two years, I've come to find out that some kids are really genuine. And that's a take on our news stories tonight. True Kai Sports, that's coming up next. And we've got VAA, Taekwondo, weightlifting, and I'll give you all the sporting updates. Stay tuned. True Kai Sports.
Welcome to Trukai Sports. The national VAR men's team have arrived in Port Moresby after competing in the Australian national titles as champions. The men did exceptionally well, securing a gold medal in the V12 event and bronze in the 500 sprints, while the women placed second in the 1,500 metre race and third in the V12 event. The team has built up their confidence and are prepared to take on the Pacific Games. The men's VAR team arrived today after competing in the IOCRA national titles in Australia after taking out gold in various events. Now we managed to catch up with the sports competition manager for VAR PNG, Melissa Kibuna. Here's what she had to say about the boys' performance on the Sunshine Coast. PNG men's team that um, was second um, up until the last five metres and even the race uh, uh, commentator um, he was uh, overwhelmed by the men's performance that they had lifted up the canoe in the last five metres and they finished uh, first in that race. While the men's team have done well and have shown that they can be a threat, Pacific Gold can only come about after beating Tahiti, who has been dominant in the sport. Well, from the resu women's results in uh, New Zealand national titles back in January, they made it into the finals and Again, in the Australian national titles, they made it into the finals as well as the men's into the um, Australian titles, in, all into the finals. I'm very confident that they will, uh, uh, there's place in for them um, in, in the medal tally, so we're looking forward to that. After their successful run at the Australian national titles, this comes as a timely boost in the lead up to the 2015 Pacific Games. Lorraine Genia, National MTV Sports. Head coach of the Oceania Weightlifting Federation, Paul Koffer, is in Papua New Guinea to assist with the coaching and upskilling of technical officials for the weightlifters as they prepare for the 2015 Pacific Games. Koffer will be running technical seminars and athlete training sessions throughout the week in partnership with the High Performance Division and the PNG Olympic Committee. His visit to PNG is also a timely boost for the Commonwealth gold medalist duo, Stephen Curry and Dikatoa, as they prepare for the July Games. PNG Taekwondo athletes are practicing special Taekwondo drills in preparation for the upcoming Pacific Games in July 2015. PNG National Taekwondo coach Edward Kassman is optimistic that this training will pave the way for local Taekwondo athletes to participate internationally. This training featured Master Eugen Lee from the Korean public tutoring Taekwondo players with various Taekwondo drills. Eric Harubma has this report. Master Eugen Lee, a world-class martial artist from the Korean Republic, is in the country training PNG Taekwondo athletes in preparation for the upcoming Pacific Games. He's Taekwondo. So, uh, all other students and then uh, the general... Kasman to train PNG's Taekwondo fighters. These athletes have participated in a series of trials since December 2013 to trim down to our 22 men final squad for the upcoming Pacific Games. This is part of the ongoing training which is set for the athletes. Meanwhile, the athletes are using Caritas Taekwondo Hall. Master Lee's presence is a major boost for the Taekwondo code because athletes in the country will be able to acquire new Taekwondo drills. PNG's Taekwondo Association National Coach Edward Kasman is optimistic and encourages the athletes to master their training skills. It, venues are coming okay with training. Um, we're not too bothered about where we fight, you know, whether it's under the coconut trees or wherever, but as long as we get to prepare well and fight and win the medal. PNG Games Junior Division gold medalist Rosa Tona is one of stars featured in the training. The maker less said after undergoing successful training season, she is determined to raise the country's flag again in the Pacific Games. I prepare for myself for the Pacific Games. I'm ready. Meanwhile, the 2015 Taekwondo squad is expecting more gold medals after a promising performance in the trial mini Pacific Games in 2013 with 14 silver, 6 bronze and 6 gold. Eric Arupma, National MTV Sports. And we'll have more sporting action in True Guy Sports when we come back. Stay with us. True Guy Sports. Welcome back to True Guy Sports. To soccer, the Telecom National Soccer League kicked off round two matches in Ley and Medang today. In Medang, Medang FC locked Admiralty in a one-all draw at the Lower Denol today. Both teams secured their first points of the season. 
while the doubleheader in lay, Hikari United scored off the boot of Alec Murimuri and Sami Tommy to earn their first win, 3-0 over Lay City Dwellers. And in the main clash of the day, the new Besta FC outfit held off the experienced Oro FC side, four goals to one, and wrapped up round two matches. The Commonwealth Games Federation in London has confirmed the countries to compete in the Seventh Circuit at the Samoa 2015 Commonwealth Youth Games. Papua New Guinea is among five other nations, with the women qualifying ahead of the men. PNG Rugby Football Union General Manager Frank Genia said this was great news for rugby union in PNG and great for the development of women's rugby. Development of women's rugby in Papua New Guinea has been on the rise. Since early last year, from the assistance of mass participation programs, Get Into Rugby and Pacific in Union. One of PNG RFU's main objective when delivering their development programs is to promote gender equality. PNG RFU General Manager Frank Genia confirmed that of the 21,000 participants in Rugby Union last year, 48% were female. While there is still a long way to go with the development of the code and sanctioning more provincial tournaments around the country to keep women involved and playing rugby, Genia told MTV that the Youth Commonwealth Games has given them a great opportunity to showcase the young, talented women. PNG's entry into the Youth Commonwealth Games will help strengthen player pathway that is currently in place and has boosted the process on establishing a junior rugby elite competition within the country. Dion Kombeng, National MTV Sports. Former Kumuls fullback Ryan Tongia has joined the Otaga Highland Highlanders in New Zealand for the 2015 Super Rugby season. Tongia has indicated earlier this year that he would be joining the Highlanders after tweeting he would be calling Dunedin home for the next two seasons. While the Highlanders have not confirmed the signing, Tongia has been named in the Highlanders train-on squad with the hope of playing his first Super Rugby season. Tongia will be the fifth Papua New Guinean to play at Super Rugby, super rugby level along the likes of Will Genia and Petoa Paraka. While the national government is financially focusing on the completion of the Pacific Games facilities before the Games begin in July 2015, the pace of construction and rehabilitation of the sporting facilities appears far from near completion. The newly constructed Caritas Gymnasium in the nation's capital provides an alt alternative venue to cater for in-house sporting codes. Once again, Eric Harupma has this report. Karuta Secondary School Deputy Principal Academic Wilma Patange said this multi-sports complex is expected to be completed before the Pacific Games begins in July 2015. While sporting facilities in the country are undergoing an overhaul in its infrastructure development, the pace appears to be at a snail pace. This million kina facility can be the main venue for AYA if the government sporting facilities are not ready on time. This 2015 games, maybe this could be a good avenue also for um, sporting games for the Pacific um, Games that is coming up. This gymnasium can be used to host in house sporting courts like table tennis, weightlifting, darts, bowling, and snooker. As this facility is near completion, the administration of Caritas Secondary School has more plans for other infrastructure development. Thanks to the Korean government for funding over 4 million kina which saw the construction of this sporting facility. That's where we get uh, most of our funds from, okay, the Korean government and our schools and benefactors. This gymnasium will cater for up to 1,000 athletes and gates in different sporting codes. Eric Arupma, National MTV Sports. And that wraps up True Guy Sports tonight. Coming up next, the weather details for the next 24 hours. Stay tuned. True Guy Sports. True Kai Sports. This weather information is brought to you by Table Birds. Looking at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in southern region, Port Moresby and Karama, cloudy weather with rain periods, evening showers expected in Daru, rain periods in Alatau, showers and rain in Popondeta. In Momase, Lake City, cloudy periods, Wewak and Vanimore, fine then early morning showers expected and a shower or two in Medang. In the New Guinea Islands, all centres to expect rain. In the highlands, all centres to expect brief evening showers, then morning fog. 
forecast for small ships, there is a warning, renewal of strong wind warning current for all coastal waters of Papua New Guinea. Looking at waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait and Daru to Kiwai Island through to Karama, Yule Island through to Hood Point, Samara Island and waters of eastern and western Milan Bay Islands, seas of 1.5 metres to 2.5 metres, waters of Samara Island to Cape Bogle, Wasu Point through to Finchapin and waters of Vitia Strait, Siasi Islands and Long Islands, seas of 1 metre to 2 metres, waters of Long Island through to Medang, Bogia to Wewak, Vanimo and its northern PNG Indonesian border, and waters of Manus and its western group of islands, waters of New Island through to New Britain and Bougainville, seas of 2.5 to 3 metres. And ocean forecasts for PNG areas, Coral Sea, sea slight to moderate, northwest to southwest winds at 10 to 20 knots, Solomon Sea and Bismarck Sea, seas moderate to rather rough with southwest to westerly winds at 15 to 25 knots, excuse me that was for Solomon Sea, for the Bismarck Sea, seas rough, northwest winds at 25 to 34 knots, and lastly Pacific Ocean seas rough with northwest winds at 20 to 34 knots. Now before we go, some sporting action. In Super Bowl, the New England Patriots were crowned as the champions of the National Football League. Giant party for New England Patriots fans after their team stormed home in an absolute thriller, overcoming a 10-point deficit to win in the dying stages, posting a four-point win over the Seattle Seahawks. Of course, the Super Bowl is much more than just the football. Of course, there is a lot of entertainment. We had John Legend singing, Indina Menzel singing the national anthem. But really, uh, Katy Perry stole the show with her halftime performance. She was joined on stage by Lenny Kravitz and also Missy Elliott. But it was really her firework finale that brought down the house. Commercials, of course, are also a highlight, and they didn't disappoint this year, of course. Companies paying $3 million just for 30 seconds. We saw a lot of celebrities, including Pierce Brosnan and Lindsay Lohan. More than 100 million viewers worldwide tuning in. But tonight, it is just one giant New England Patriot party as they manage to defeat the Seattle Seahawks. Well, before we go, a quick recap of our main news tonight. As always, Bank South Pacific launches newest subsidiary, also 2015 legal year launch, and remembering the MV Rabal Queen disaster after three years. Well, that's been the news, sports and weather. From the National MTV News team, I'm Tokana Asabi. Thanks for your company. You take care and stay safe. Good night.